Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice, an initiative of Rouse IAS. Here we take up important articles from the Hindu and the Indian Express and curate MCQs as per the demand of the civil services exam. Articles covered today are shown in the screen and the detailed description in PDF and Word format can be found on the description box. So let us begin. Starting with the first article of the day, which appears in the Hindu newspapers, page 6. The article highlights that the Andhra police have arrested six people accused of smuggling red sanders. Now, UPSC in the past have asked questions about legally protected plants and animals, which is clear from this PYQ of 2015 on dugong, a mammal found in India. On similar lines, we have curated this first question on red sanders. Consider the following statements regarding red sanders. Statement 1. It is a tree species endemic to Western Ghats. Now this statement is incorrect as red sanders are limited to Eastern Ghats of the country and not the Western Ghats. Within Andhra Pradesh, the species can be found on Palakonda and Sheshchalam hills. Now the second statement, it is listed under the Schedule 4th of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. This statement is correct as the red sanders is a slow-growing tree species that attains maturity in natural forest after 25 to 40 years. Under the Foreign Trade Policy of India, the import of red sanders is prohibited, while the exports are restricted. Moving on to the third statement, it is an endangered species as per the IUCN Red List. This statement is also correct. From the above discussion, we can conclude that the option B is the right answer, as the statements 2 and 3 are correct. Now coming back to the PYQ, the option C is the correct answer. Moving on to the second article of the day, which appeared in the op section of Hindu on page 8. The article analyzes Adopt a Heritage Scheme of Government of India. Cultural heritage is an area of interest for the UPSC, which you can see from the previous year question in 2021 that asked a question on languages. On the similar lines, we have curated this question on the article. With reference to Adopt a Heritage Scheme, consider the following statements. The first statement, the scheme has been launched by Ministry of Tourism. This statement is correct. As the scheme was launched in September 2017 by the President of India, the scheme was launched by Ministry of Tourism and is a collaborative effort between Ministry of Tourism, Ministry of Culture, Archaeological Survey of India and the governments of state and union territory. Now the second statement, the scheme has allowed public sector corporations only to adopt heritage sites and improve tourism in such sites. Now this statement is incorrect as the scheme aims to involve public sector companies as well as private sector companies, corporate citizens and individuals to take up the responsibility for making our heritage and tourism more sustainable. Now the third statement, the companies become monument mitras through financial bidding process. This statement is incorrect as there is no financial bidding involved, rather an innovative concept of vision bidding where the agencies with the best vision for the heritage sites will be given an opportunity to associate pride with their CSR activity. Now which of the following statements given above is or are correct? From the discussion, it is clear that the option A is the right answer. Moving on to the previous year question, option B is the correct answer. Moving on to the third article of the day, which you can find in the page 14 of the Hindu. Here, the ISRO has conducted a successful flight acceptance hot test for the cryogenic upper stage of the LVM-3 launch vehicle. Indian space program in general and satellite launch vehicles in particular have been a key area of interest from the point of view of prelims, which you can see from the PYQ of the year 2018, where it asked a question regarding India's satellite launch vehicles. On a similar basis, we have drafted the practice question number 3. With reference to the launch vehicle Mark 3, consider the following statements. Statement 1. It is the heaviest rocket currently in use by the Indian Space Research Organization and it will replace the PSLV as the ISRO's main launch vehicle. This statement is incorrect. Although LVM-3 is the heaviest rocket currently in use, However, it is built to supplement and not replace the PSLV. The second statement, LVM-3 is a four-stage launch vehicle, while PSLV is a three-stage launch vehicle. Now, this statement is also incorrect. 
because LVM3 is a three-stage launch vehicle while the PSLV is a four-stage launch vehicle. Now the third statement, LVM3 can lift lighter satellites to geostationary transfer orbit and heavier satellites to low earth orbit. This statement is correct as LVM3 can lift up to 4000 kilograms to geostationary transfer orbit and up to 8000 kilograms to low earth orbits. Which of the following statements is or are correct? From the discussion, we can conclude that the option B is the correct answer. Moving on to the PYQ, option A is the correct answer. Moving on to the fourth article of the day, which was covered in page 3 and 13 of the Indian Express. It talks about India's GDP growth, which slowed to a three-quarter low of 4.4%, primarily due to contraction in manufacturing. National income accounting is an important aspect from the point of view of prelims exam, which you can see from the PYQ of 2015, which asked about decrease in tax to GDP ratio. On broadly similar lines, we have drafted this practice question number four. In context of the Indian economy, consider the following statements. Statement one, both GDP and GVA measures India's economic growth. This statement is correct. Statement two, GDP captures the supply side, whereas GVA measures the demand side of the economy. Now, this statement is incorrect. GDP captures the demand side of the economy, while the GVA calculates the national income from the supply side. It adds up the value in monetary terms by the different sectors of the economy. Now, the third statement, GVA, is calculated by adjusting GDP with the difference of tax levied and subsidies provided by the government. This statement is also incorrect because GDP is the sum total of GVA and the difference between tax and subsidies. From the above discussion, it is clear that the option A is the correct answer. For the PYQ, option A is the correct answer. Now the fifth article of the day, which is covered by the Indian Express in page 12. It reports that the inspectors from the IAEA found uranium particles enriched up to 83.7% in Iran's Frodo nuclear site. Organizations associated with the UN have been previously asked by the UPSC, which is clear from this 2022 PYQ, which asked a question about United Nations General Assembly. On similar lines, let us understand this practice question number 5. Consider the following statements regarding the International Atomic Energy Agency or the IAEA. Statement 1. It was set up as atoms for peace through its own treaty and statute. Now this statement is correct. The organization was created in 1957 and its genesis can be traced back to US President Eisenhower's Atoms for Peace Address. It was established independently of the UN through its own international treaty and statute. But the IAEA reports to both UN General Assembly and its Security Council. Now the second statement. A country has to be a signatory of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in order to become a member of the IAEA. This statement is incorrect because signature and ratification of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty are not the prerequisites for the membership of the IAEA. Now the third statement. India is the founding member and is recognized by the IAEA as the nuclear weapon state. Again, this statement is incorrect. Although India is a founding member of the IAEA, but it is not recognized as a nuclear weapon state by the IAEA. From the above discussion, it is clear that the option B is the correct answer. For the PYQ, option D is the correct answer. Now the last article of the day, which you can find in the Indian Express, page number 13. The Supreme Court has refused to hear Delhi's former deputy CM's bill plea. It rejected the argument that he had a right against self-incrimination. Questions on fundamental rights have been a frequent occurrence in the civil services prelims exam, which is clear from this PYQ in the year 2020 on protection against untouchability. Broadly on similar lines, we have curated the practice question number 6. Which of the following categories of fundamental rights incorporates protection against self-incrimination? Option A. Rights against exploitation. This is incorrect as the right against exploitation covers Article 23 and 24. Right to constitutional remedies. This is also incorrect as it covers Article 32. 
Option D, right to equality. This is also incorrect as it covers Article 14 to 18. The correct answer is Option B because it covers Article 19 to 22. Article 20, subclause 3 of Indian Constitution says that no person accused of any offence shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. The right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty and the right to remain silent essentially flows from this constitutionally guaranteed right against self-incrimination. This right also ensures that the police cannot coerce anyone to confess a crime. The protection against self-incrimination extends to both oral evidences and documentary evidences. However, it does not extend to compulsory production of material objects, giving thumb impressions, blood specimens, and signatures. Further, it extends only to criminal proceedings and not to civil proceedings. As far as PYQ is concerned, option D is the right answer.